Hello and welcome to Tech Talks, featuring the PLC Interface Relay Series. My name is Andrew Bogacic, Product Marketing Manager. And I'm Clinton Hummel, Associate Product Marketing Manager. And you know, Clint, over the last few episodes, we talked over 700 different part numbers in this relay family. So I would have thought you could just use one relay for everything, but why the 700? Yeah, that's a great question, Andrew. So we have, of course, our Universal Series relays. But we also have specialty relays, mm. and it's much like a multi-tool. Just because the multi-tool can do the job doesn't mean it's better than or as good as a purpose-built tool for the job. Sure, multi-tools are fantastic. They can accomplish it. And I think what you're showing me here is a multi-tool versus not multi-tool scenario? That's exactly right. So we have the same exact setup uh, repeated on two rails, one with the universal relays on top okay, and one with the sensor actuator relays on the bottom. So these universal relays, that's kind of the one size fits all can handle most applications. Exactly. Okay. So let's walk through this really quickly. So on this one, we have a sensor wired into some relays, and then we have a contactor wired into some universal relays. So when we sense metal here, we're gonna turn on a relay, and then it's gonna trigger that contact. Contactor go, so yes, very simple application. Sensor, actuator. Absolutely, so a sensor needs um, a power source to it, yep. as well as a ground and a signal. So three wires, and a actuator, such as a contactor, is gonna have um, power output and a zero volt return. So to connect that with the universal relay, you'll see we've used some terminal blocks here to distribute 24 volts or zero volts uh, as needed for the sensor or the actuator. So yeah, I see a lot of terminal blocks here for the universal application, but I'm not seeing terminal blocks down here. Yeah, great observation. So this is where we have a multi-tool and this is where we have a specialty tool, okay? Mm -hmm. So the specialty tool here is our sensor and actuator series relays. So instead of using terminal blocks, mm -hmm. we use our power feed-in module and our continuous length bridges to distribute 24 volts to sensors mm -hmm. and zero volts to actuators. But here's my favorite part. Okay. They work exactly the same, yeah. but this one has a lot less components required and a lot less labor time and assembly than the upper rail. Uh, yeah, if I start thinking about it, so right now we have just a few of these wired, but I can imagine as you continue to build up, you're wiring more and more, more than just these few, what, 16 channels here. Yeah. That adds significant time here, significantly less time, material, cost, everything when you go with the application specific, which in this scenario is a sensor, sensor and actuator relays. Absolutely. Ah, that makes a ton of sense. So. You talk about sensor and actuator relays, I think this is maybe one example. I think some other examples lead in with like approvals, right? Yeah, so that's a great point too. Just because a universal relay can do the fundamental job of switching the uh, sure. signal, it doesn't mean it's suitable for the application. So that's where something like a hazardous location relay comes in, for example. In a hazardous location, we might have uh, combustible uh, air, mm -hmm. things that are combustible in the air rather, and when we switch a relay contact, it can create a spark. So what we need to do is use a special sealant to uh, prevent atmosphere from ever reaching that spark inside the relay. And then we submit that to UL and IEC and other approval bodies to make sure this thing is safe for the class one div two area as well as the class one zone two area. Perfect, so it works for all applications around the world that need a hazardous location. So you wouldn't use the universal, you use the application specific. Absolutely. So I think that probably applies to things like shipbuilding. I know there's special approvals there. The rail industry also requires special approvals. So I assume as part of that 700 part numbers, these are some of the options. You got it, exactly. So um, marine approvals for you know harsh saltwater conditions, plus if you're on a boat in the middle of the ocean, uh, thousands of kilometers from sea uh, shore, the failure is not an option, right? It's certainly not. And when you're talking about railroads, there's you know a lot of tonnage, a lot of safety factors, and even in the case of uh, passenger cars, you need to worry about will the relay work? It's critical to the ventilation and heating systems. Sure. And if it catches on fire, is it toxic or is it safe for people to breathe, relatively speaking? Yes. So those are the types of things that are encompassed in special approvals with relays. That's fantastic. So thank you for bringing this demo and showing us here. So we saw one example and then we talked about some of the approvals. I think in the next episode, you're gonna bring us a few more application specific type relays. That's right, stick around. Can't wait.